everyone, welcome to Xbox On. I'm here at a special Deus Ex event and I'm here with Fleur, the live team producer on Deus Ex. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And um, could I ask you, first off, first question, could you tell us a little bit more about the story of Deus Ex? We're two years after the events of Human Revolution and so the tragic events that happened at the end of the game. And now the world is completely divided uh, after what happened and the augmented people are being segregated and they're considered dangerous. Adam Jensen is right in the middle of it. When we started building Mankind Divided, we wanted to build on our pillars uh, and we knew that in Human Revolution, I mean, the stealth pillar was already like pretty solid, so if it's not broken, don't, you know, touch it. <laughs> and the cover systems, uh, system comes into it because uh, from you, in Human Revolution, it was the lateral cover system, but now in Mankind Divided, you have, you can like cover uh, to the front, uh, to the back, and you have visual feedback on where you're gonna actually go, and it makes it a lot more fluid, a lot, a lot more dynamic. You're working on a new thing that's going to be added to the game, which is Breach. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and how it fits into Deus Ex? Breach is a new game mode that we're going to release at the same time uh, as uh, Mankind Divided. It's an arcade twist on the core of the Deus Ex gameplay. And so you are in a virtual reality uh, environment. There's like a very particular look to it. It's that very kind of very Deus Ex triangular looking yeah. amazing environment. And it's white and purple. Is what kind of inspired that look? The color is actually fuchsia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but it's important because uh, pink is a color that doesn't exist in the game. The only uh, character who wears pink is Eliza Kassan, the newscaster. And she wears pink because she's an AI, she's not real. And so it's one of the main colors of Reach and it represents the data that you're actually uh, going to steal inside the servers. Is there a competitive kind of edge to this? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we have have uh, two competitive components. The first is leaderboards, and we have two kinds of leaderboards, and that's very important. Um, and so if you want to be really good at score, you're going to have, for instance, to kill a lot of AIs. Uh, but if you want to be really good at time, you're going to go through it in undetected and super fast. And the second uh, aspect to the competition is challenges. So if you think you've done really, really well on the map, you can challenge a friend uh, and send him either your score or your time. And that's the only information they get. They don't know how you achieved it. They don't know which modifiers you might have used on the map, which augmentations you had, weapons, whatever. So they will have, and it's going to be their turn to figure out how to beat the system. So you've given players a lot of choice in how they play the game, but does how they play the game affect the world around them at all? You are, you're playing against uh, that, that super intelligent AI that's operating the servers, and the thing is, it's gonna adapt to you. So it's gonna learn how you play and try to counter it. So for instance, if you're a very combat-oriented player, uh, the, the enemies that you will face will learn uh, and will get more armor or more HP, they will start to use augmentations against you. While on the other side, if you're a very stealthy player, the more you play, the more levels you play, the more the detection system will try to get better and will detect you faster and you will get less uh, error margin in there. At the end of the level, you also gain experience because, I mean, we're a Death Sex game. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, with experience comes practice points and you unlock your augmentations that way. But the trick is uh, even if you unlock all of your augmentations you cannot equip all of them at the same time because you have a limited amount of memory on your avatar so you will have to choose whenever you want to go inside a level uh, the set of augmentation that you want to with you. Uh, so if you're, you're, you know that you're infiltrating a level that will be more about like uh, platforming and, and like cameras and things like that, you're going to take a different set of augmentations than if you're infiltrating a, a level with a lot of AIs and possibly a lot of combat. There's um, also kind of augments that you can put on the weapons. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So um, you can apply effects on your weapon and those are, it's not a one-time use, it's like uh, permanent. 
uh, and we have all kinds of cool uh, effects. Like for instance, uh, say I'm not at all a combat player, I never shoot at anyone, but just the fact that I have that weapon in my inventory and I have that weapon ability applied to it, uh, I will regain energy or HP faster. Uh, or I can apply an active ability to weapon and say that when I use it and I shoot an AI, uh, it will actually turn against its own faction and help me kill everyone in the map. So there's a little bit more info on Deus Ex. Thank you so much, Fleur, for telling us more about it. Are you excited about the game? How are you going to play it? Are you going to be shooty like Benny or sneaky like me? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe for way more cool videos from us in future. We'll see you next time. Bye!